Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. To kick the year off right, I decided to go ahead and review the latest release from Longmorn, that being a cast strength 18 year old uh, that was released for 2023. Of course, here in Texas, we just are just now getting it on the shelves and I, I'm recording this December 27th, uh, 2023. And we're just now getting these within the, probably the last week uh, here. And so I went ahead and picked this bottle up because A, Longmorn, I've loved it for decades, as we can see here. And also because it was Cast Strength Longmorn. Cast Strength Longmorn is very, very hard to come by. Uh, every blue moon you'll see an independent bottler do a Cast Strength Longmorn. They're usually great, by the way. Uh, but the reason we don't see a lot of it is because most of Longmorn has historically gone into blends. And so doers chevis they'll they'll all use it in their blends um and it adds a very unique character which we'll see as we taste through these uh, but at 57.6 percent retail pricing was 275 dollars, so it's about 300 out the door for me after taxes uh, but it does come in a really nice little box it is just cardboard uh, but it does have a really nice art deco look to it and i decided i'll go ahead and take a chance on it and we'll go ahead and review it for y'all now it being a new year, I decided, you know what, let's kind of do this as much as I can. I'm going to try to do, because I've got a collection that I've been collecting for now 30 years, and I have a lot of old bottles, and I thought, you know, if I get the opportunity to taste some of my old bottles and maybe review them and with, alongside a new one, it'd be kind of neat to see them, how they, you know, progressed. And so I'm going to do that with this Longmorn 18, starting with the Longmorn 15, which released in 1993. Uh, 1993 Longmorn 15 was only bottled at 90 proof, but it retailed at about $40. So it wasn't, you know, really nice price point for that. Um, then in 2007, they discontinued that for the Longmorn 16. Now we've, di you know, this may not seem, seem, seem like the bottle that you've seen of 16 year old because they've done some in purple uh, little tubes and different canisters and stuff like that. This Longmorn 16 comes in this little gray box not a huge fan of it because if you go to pick it up from the ground, it wants to kind of, you know, fling open like that. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, but the Longmorn 16 came out in 2007. Along the way, around 2014 is when this one was, and this was a fantastic bottling of Longmorn 16. And so I decided I'll go ahead and put that in the lineup. It is bottled at 48% uh, ABV, 96 proof. So we're going to taste them in that order, 90 proof, 96 proof, all the way to a 115.2 proof for that Longmorn 18. I'm going to start off with a sip of water. All right, we're going to get into the Longmorn 15. This bottle is from around 1994, 95. It's seen better days because I know the label's kind of peeling back a little bit, but when you get to the nose of this one, it's massive. It's... Um, you can tell there definitely is some sherry casks, and if I turn it to the side, Longmorn will talk about it being ex-bourbon barrel and hogsheads a lot of times. Uh, but as you can see in this 15, there definitely is some sherry cask influence. But on the nose, you do get a lot of that kind of, you get a little plum, little dates, leather, that huge Longmorn leather, because that is what they're known for. Matter of fact, if you're familiar with Longmorn and you put it in a blind, it's that big leather that's the tail for me on Longmorn. Occasionally you'll get citrus and you'll get different little, you know, apricot or that type thing, but sometimes nectarine, but the big leather, that's huge in Longmorn. And in this one, it's definitely there, but you get a lot of dried fruits in here as well. A lot of almost baking spices with the anise and the clove and the nutmeg. A hint of floral. Almost like there's a little bit of a hibiscus water in here. But a big malt and a big honey characteristic. All right, let's go ahead and try it. Mm. Just above medium viscosity. Really nice viscosity for a 90 proof whiskey enters with a big, heavy, almost like a raw honey uh, or even beeswax, because it is pretty waxy. Um, raw honey, beeswax, B 
big heavy malt, equally large leather right there component, a little touch of like an orange zest. That little hint of hibiscus is in there. You get to pick up a little peat in here as well. And let me say, this is by no means a peated whiskey, but every now and then in the, com in the blending component, they'll use a touch, a minute amount of peat in some of the distillate just to help give it a little bit of more flavor nuance. And, and you'll pick it up. If you're super, super sensitive to peat, you might pick it up. But if I told you it was just more like a, oh, a little wisp of smoke, like from a campfire in the distance, you would agree with me. It's very, very minute. As far as it being uh, fruit-wise, it does have that kind of plum uh, date characteristic into it. Some caramelized berries in there. A lot of that leather, that little orange zest is in there. Slivers of almonds as well in the back end. Now just a whisper, a whisper. It's almost like right in there with that little tiny whisper of peat, a little coffee bean in this one. But to me, this tastes very old. And when I say I taste old, it means like there was probably older barrels than just 15 going into this. Because again, if you see an age statement, 16, 18, that's the minimum age of every drop that's in there. There could have very well been some 20 to 25 year old barrels going in here because at the time there wasn't a huge demand for single malt at the time blends were huge so a lot of us going into blends they probably could get you know barrels of older stock throw it in there no big deal okay longhorn 15 fantastic we love it now we're going to move on to the longhorn 16. bumping up in proof now 96 proof from 2014. It's a lot of flavor on that one. That waxy beeswax thing is just lingering. Okay. Long one 16 on the nose. A little fresher. Cleaner, meaning it's not, doesn't have that dense uh, dried fruit date kind of thing, that heavy fruit on top of this one. This one's much more into the Lightly tropical, apricot, maybe a little fig, but that's about it. Definitely pick up more, a little more citrus here. Stays on the orange, though. Now you could talk me nectarine on this one. Okay, let's taste it. Oh, one thing there, I picked up on the edge of that glass. The cocoa. Cocoa is more intense on this one, but here we go. Mm. Oof, that's really, it's well done. That's beautiful right there. Wow. Okay, here we go. So the way this one enters is much softer than even this one because this one has the intensity of those dried fruits and those darker, almost sherry components kind of hitting early with that big leather. This one, you're immediately greeted with this big, again, that big heavy honeyed malt thing hits really early with the leather on this one. Medium, just above medium, yeah, medium, above medium viscosity. Not quite medium high, but it's heading that way. But you get hit with the, the caramelized sugars, those um, raw honey, Big leather, orange zest on this one. Heavy cocoa dusting on the mid palate. Lots of cocoa. Little bit of clove anise in this one. The almond thing is kind of carrying over even from that one. So I do get the slivered almonds on the back end. Lightly roasted because, again, that cocoa, that leather. Little hint of a coffee bean. But to me, it's more of a roasted almond characteristic on the back end here. Super enjoyable, very long finish. Now this is, it boasts right there on the little neck tag, non-chill filtered. And ever since then, around 2007, that's just one of their calling cards. 
They like to do non-chill filtered products, which I personally rather see because I'm not really concerned with it getting cloudy if I add an ice cube or a few drops of water. That doesn't bother me because usually it's not going to last that long in the glass anyway. Uh, but to me, I can... I like the esters, the kind of fatty oils that aren't getting stripped out by the chill filtering. To me, I think it adds a little more viscosity and a little more flavor. So this Longmorn 16 is very, very well done. It's almost calling me back to that glass for a second sip, but I better wait. Because again, we're trying to keep these videos manageable here on time. So I will get a sip. I will say at price point about 140 hopefully. You know, at the time, I think when it first came out, it was $100, and it crept up to $140, and I think now I see it all the way up to $240. Uh, but at $140, really good malt. I would buy that at $140, $150. $240, no, I don't think so. Okay, Longmorn 18, the one that I really wanted to review for you. 57.6% ABV, $275 retail, non-chill filter, Longmorn 18 on the nose. All right, very, very, I would call this one almost elegant on the nose, which is odd for a Longmorn. I normally wouldn't call a Longmorn elegant, but it is very soft, sweet, fragrant, lightly perfumey. But I do get the very light caramel. It's almost like a, almost like a caramelized sugar, like a creme brulee topping. Yeah, that's in there. And then I pick up lots of apricots. The tropical fruits are developing. One thing about Longmorns, when they get older, they usually develop tropical fruits. I didn't pick up that much in the 16, but in this one, oh, there's even a little bit of, dare I say, developing in this bottle as it's been breathing. A little hint of a, but it almost has a little bit of the Klein Leash, Old Brora, Barnyard is what I was picking up there on the edge of that glass. Which, I know, it doesn't sound great, but it's almost like I try to describe Barnyard to people in, in those old whiskeys. More like, not manure directly, right? Not like you're putting your nose in the cow patty. It's like, like you're at the rodeo and you're walking around and you pick up the hints of the hay and the straw and the, the sweet confectionery sugars that are being cooked off in the oils and all that. And, and then there is a little manure in the air. It's kind of like that. I don't know if it's going to show on the on the palate, but there was a whisper of that in the nose. But you do get the citrus. You do get the apricots. And to me, it's almost like a underripe pineapple, a little bit of mango on the tropical note here. With that big leather, a little bit of orange zest as well. But let's taste it. Mm. Ooh, papaya. Whoa. That's impactful. That's nice. And I have been sharing this. I haven't been drinking this bottle like this. This has been shared with a lot of people. I've had this probably two times before, a little taste of it. Wow. Super impactful on the flavor. It enters like kind of like it knows, which was very sophisticated and elegant. Soft. You get this kind of, again, that creme brulee caramelized sugar thing and then you get those soft apricots entering that honeyed malt kind of character entering a little bit of the beeswax in there and then you start noticing that papaya creep up it starts going that tropical way right there on the mid palate and then you get hit with a wall of leather a little bit of anise uh, clove characteristic that i was picking up in the 16 as well but that kind of hits in there at that mid palate with this one with the cocoa not as much cocoa, surprisingly, as the 16 had, but it's in there. Wow, I think it drinks amazingly well at 57.6%. Inner soft again, that apricot, a little bit of that nectarine. Here we go on that ride with the intensity. It kind of picks up on that spice level right there on the mid-palate. Doesn't get too hot, but it is got the anise and the clove in it with that cinnamon, baking cinnamon. That rises up, showing the proof. Big leather, little cocoa on that back end, pushing it along. That little bit of that uh, slivered almonds is on the backslide of that as well. 
oak is a little more resinous, which I like. The papaya is still lingering. There's a little bit of that pineapple in here. It's not super ripe. This is does stay on the lightly unripe pineapple. Yes. Maybe in a little bit of mango. Not a lot. And I would almost call this one dried mango. Not that fresh mango, but really, really well done for the Longmorn 18. That whisper of peat that I think I was picking up over here. I mean, it is a whisper of a smoke note in here. Nothing if I have friends that, are, that can't stand peat. They would love this one. But somebody who's tasted a lot of whiskeys, you know, I can tell, you know, I just know, you know, they used to use a touch, just a smidge of peat into those blends. And if you focus on it, you can pick it up in there. But it's, again, it's just a little minor nuance and a huge symphony of aromatics and flavors. I think that Longmorn 18 is fantastic. So if you see this out there, $275, if you have it and you feel like taking that shot and getting that really rare experience of a full cast strength Longmorn with some good maturation on it, I think it's worth your time. I have done, uh, tasted this where I added water to it. And I'm not going to sit here and wait for it the whole way, but I will say, if you like the softer, rounder, kind of the old Longhorn 16 style, or even that old double cask 18, where they were low proofed, 96 uh, proof, and you liked how soft and round those were, just add a few drops of water to this. And what you're going to see is that big wall that I was picking up on that leather and cocoa, um, that wall kind of gets shaved down, and it feels much softer rounder at that mid palate so you don't get that intense hit me personally i love when kind of single malts get a little wild like that so i don't typically like to add water to it and just remember if you do add water to any whiskey you always want to give it like 30 seconds for it to kind of calm down because the first thing it's going to kick out it's going to be that cinnamon spice and it's going to be kicking out that oak tannin uh, speaking of oak tannins that's the one thing you didn't hear me talk a lot about throughout these they're not over oak by any means the tropical pops a little more with the water. A little more floral comes out with the water. So that little hibiscus that I was picking up here was a little lacking here. It is in the 18 with the addition of water. Uh, other thing to note, this bottle has been breathing. I have not been gassing this bottle with argon as I normally do with all my bottles. Uh, but that's because I kind of wanted it to breathe. Felt a little... A little muted when I first opened it. I felt like air would do it really well. And I've known from experience with some of my other cast strength Longmorns that when you give them air, those tropical notes will develop and they actually hit a really nice peak. And it's at that point where I'll start gassing it. But right now, I think it's getting really close to that spot. Uh, very enjoyable whiskey. Uh, if you can, please join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound. It is with their support that I'm able to keep this channel going because I am self-purchasing these bottles to review for you. And it's with your help that I'm able to keep it going. Uh, but if you're not able to join me there and you're only able to join me on uh, YouTube, you are going to get these videos two weeks later. You're going to have to watch the ads and that type thing. Uh, but that's benefits to joining us over there for as little as $5. And I think the highest tier is only $10. Uh, but regardless of where you're joining me, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Let's have a fantastic 2024. Cheers to you. Have a great night. Take care.